All right, folks, welcome back to Krantz's Corner. We're going to do a little Canes, a little recap. We've only had a week, really, at camp, and then we had the week off for the kids so far. The, the kids, I said the college kids, they had some time off. There were reports of guys working out here, working out there. That's fine. But I really want to go over the first week of camp with my guy, Gabby Arudia from 247 Sports. Gabby's been all over the place with me for Krantz's Corner since day one. I love bringing him on. But I, will, I always do this. Welcome back to Krantz's Corner. I always have to do that first. Yeah, absolutely. That's no, I'm, so, I'm, I'm always glad to be back. Always right. Be back. Love having you on here. Love talking just about anything with you. So, all right, week one of camp is done. Uh, nothing too crazy. We're, nothing too nuts went on. But, obviously, we got to recap what you saw. Offensively, obviously, I would just assume that Cam Ward is going to be the talk of the town for week one. What you see out of him in this first week? and how he's kind of leading this offense. I know you're not going to get much. It was three practices, yeah. but mm -hmm. what did your eyes tell you for week one? Yeah, I mean, there's not – we don't have to see too much, right? I mean, we're we're just watching him throw the ball. Uh, you know, you just get to see him whip it around. I mean, just that natural arm talent, right? Uh, you know, you turn on the, the tape at Washington State and, you know, see what he's already done at the, you know, Power 5, now Power 4 level. Um, but, you know, you, you saw all of that. You saw all of the things that made him – you know, such a coveted quarterback in the transfer portal. You see why he was testing the NFL draft waters. It looks like he has an NFL type of arm. Like he, you can definitely layer it, you know, to all levels of the field. You see him, you know, kind of deliver it uh, with accuracy outside of the numbers. You can see him kind of throw it strikes to the, you know, the middle intermediate routes. Uh, you, and then just a deep ball, you know, the touch and, and accuracy and, and, you know, drive that he kind of has on that ball when it's time to kind of push it downfield. He has it all. I mean, he, he checks off all of those boxes and, you know, when you you just look around the landscape of what college football is, you know, the, the arms that are kind of coming back to the sport. I mean, you know, obviously there are some some good quarterbacks that are coming back. You know, the Quinn Ewers, um, you know, you got uh, you got, I mean, a few other guys, you know, just across the country. I, I can't even rattle, rattle them all, right. all off right now. But I mean, I feel it feels like Cam Ward is is near the top of, you know, just the pure passers of, of what's coming back. And again, you kind of see it. I feel like what I took away from week one is just that. Miami has a big time college level arm with potential with a guy a guy who has the potential to play on Sundays. Uh, you know, again, there's a lot that still needs to happen. This is just kind of you know shorts and shirts. I think on Friday they were kind of in shoulder pads. They're in uppers right. basically. Uh, you know, they haven't gone fully padded. I believe on Tuesday they'll be fully prep padded for the first time. Uh, but you know, when, you, when you're looking at a quarterback and just don't just arm talent, you don't need to see him in pads. It's just, right. uh, you know, you watched the way he ripped it around. Uh, today's pro day at Miami, as we're kind of reporting this, I think Cam Ward's going to throw at pro day, so I'm sure he's going to get a, he's going to give NFL scouts a little glimpse of uh, what's coming ahead of that 2025 NFL draft. I'm excited to watch him throw, you know, a little bit more uh, in that type of setting. But uh, but yeah, I mean, my, Cam Ward has shown that he kind of is who everyone thought he was, which is a big deal. Right. And it's nice to have that here in Coral Cables year yeah. or, two, or whatever, it, however much time he's going to be here, whether it's for a couple months, a year, whatever it is. Yeah. It's good to just have that position solidified. The youngsters are there it's, and, 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 you know, and that's fine. And they're going to learn a lot. That quarterback room is going to learn a lot from each other. I think over the course of the season and the young guys are going to get a lot better, I think mentally and watching and everything physically as well. Um, week one, obviously uh, two, I guess it's a two part question for you. Were you, were you, uh, kind of surprised that Restrepo came back to play for this Miami team for a senior year. And that catch in week one, was that the highlight of all highlights at this point? Cause I, I know that we saw like the video of it. I, I actually saw you at camp that day. I didn't get to see the catch and I don't even know how many people actually did see the catch, but yeah. the two things, one, were you expecting him to come back and two, are we going to just see this all year long from like the captain of the team, basically in Restrepo? Yeah, I mean, first part, I honestly wasn't sure what to expect there. You know, I think for a lot of different reasons, uh, you know, he had a career year as a slot. Uh, right. You know, would he go and test the NFL draft waters? Was he going to test a transfer portal? I mean, Tyler Van Dyke is, was, you know, everyone kind of thought of him as his best friend. And I think they are obviously very, very close. Um, I thought when Tyler Van, well, at least when the writing was on the wall for Tyler Van Dyke, and then, of course, he hit the transfer portal, went to Wisconsin. Like, I thought maybe there was a chance, you know, and this was just me thinking. This wasn't like anything right. else being like delivered to me or like, uh, you know, relayed to me that Xavier Strippel was going to leave or or intended to leave. Um, but I was a little bit, I, a part of me, I think, was a little bit surprised that he came back, if I'm being honest. Um, and then second part, yeah, I mean, it seems to me like Restrepo is just kind of hitting a new gear, right? Uh, and he looks faster, which right. is, I think, good. Like, I, I think he looks, like, noticeably quicker and faster. I mean, I, I don't know how often you get to 
I don't know how, again, just kind of having an older guy just kind of return and, uh, you know, everything that he's able to produce from the slot. And then you think about the Shannon Dawson offenses and, you know, right. you go back to like kind of Tank Dell, like what he did out of the slot for Shannon Dawson. And then Xavier Strippel having, you know, a thousand yard season out of the slot. Uh, and then you kind of see like this, it, it really does look like he's kind of on a new level uh, athletically and, you know, all that type of stuff from his game is just totally stepped up. You talk to people around him and, you know, he spent all off season working to get faster. I'm really excited about what he's going to bring. Yeah. That catch was ridiculous for everyone that saw it. And I think, you know, I'm expecting that we're going to get the best version of Xavier Strippo that uh, we've seen, uh, you know, to this point. And if we do, uh, I think there's a couple of Miami Hurricanes records that, that could potentially be broken. Uh, you know, I think he could break Mike Harley's career receptions right. record. I think he could potentially break the single season, uh, you know, yardage record. Uh, I'm not sure. I, I, I don't think he's anywhere. I don't know if he's close on career yards, but a single season, he wasn't super far off. Um, he wasn't super far off when, you know, just last year. So uh, I think Restrepo's in for a monster, monster season. Yeah, I do too. I really do. I feel like he's going to really pump it up this year as well uh what are you expecting to see from the tight ends in this offense and, and you know because i know that you know we, it was something that me and you talked about i think even in the primer before spring started yeah. and, and how they're going to be used and the young guys they have there because they have some talented young guys mm-hmm. and they have some name guys there that obviously can pick it up and make a name for themselves especially in this offense here at this school but what are you expecting in dawson's offense here yeah, I'm expecting Miami's offense to go back to, you know, utilizing the tight end. I think that's a a, a core part of, you know, I think it's a, a core p- position that Miami wants to utilize. Last year, obviously, was kind of a mess. You know, Cam McCormick is not the typical uh, pass-catching tight end. He's more of just like, you know, a, a line of scrimmage, you know, in-line type of tight end, as they call him. Uh, you know, he was – and then you had behind him a true freshman in Riley Williams. Elijah Royal was basically out all year. Uh, he's 100% back now, and he Good. looks incredible. He looks awesome. Uh, you know, we talk to people around the program. You know, I've heard some stuff that, like, they're expecting some, you know, last year Will Mallory type of production, right? And, uh, you know, we know that year, Mario Crispo's first year, which was a disaster on right. many fronts. But Will Mallory led the team in receiving with 500 and something yards. I'm not saying Elijah Royal, they're expecting Elijah Royal to lead the team in receiving, but I think they still feel like they can get that high level production right. out of the tight end room while still spreading the ball around to their playmakers. Uh, Elijah Royal looks to be 100%. He's moving around extremely well. Uh, Riley Williams is a year older. Uh, you know, this is his second full off season with Miami as a guy that was an early enrollee. Uh, he looks awesome too. And then you got kind of Cam McCormick coming back for what a ninth year, but he's like tight end three, you know, like now he's not the guy you need to kind of rely on a ton. Right. You have your two kind of horses that are, you know, older, better, healthy, and that are going to be able to go. And then you got a true freshman in an Elijah Lofton out of uh, Bishop Gorman, who people call people out, you know, in Vegas call baby Brevin. Uh, he's built exactly similarly to Brevin Jordan. He's probably a little wider, maybe a little stockier, but he's extremely fast. Uh, he does a really good job of creating separation. His body type is probably not what you would expect. Um, you know, he's probably six foot two ish, uh, 235, 240 pounds, kind of like bowling ball ish, but right. he is quick. He's a ridiculous athlete. <laughs> Uh, he could probably play some tailback if you needed him to. He could, you know, he could. Some people thought he could potentially uh, be a middle linebacker if uh, wow. you know, he chose to play on that side of the ball. He's a, an incredible athlete, uh, probably the strongest in the weight room uh, of anyone in that tight end room. He's a he, he's a he's a big time talent. He's not going to check off the boxes from a measurable standpoint, but he's just an, uh, he's a football player. You know, he's one of those guys. They just find a way to get him on the field, put the ball in his hands. He's going to deliver for you. And he's played a lot of big time football at a really really good program. Yeah. Uh, in Bishop Gorman. So that tight end room is exciting, man. And yeah, I think, I'm excited uh, for that. I'm, I, yeah, I, you know, like fun. I know we talk about, and, and I'll bring up JoJo Trader in a second, Restrepo and the running backs and Cam Ward being there, but it's just something different with this team and this kind of school when they have one or two or three tight ends in the mix. Uh, that are productive and you know for the right. next four or five years will probably be here sitting there and, and that stable of tight ends. And that offense just looks so much more smooth when they use the tight ends the way they have in the last 10 or 15 years. So uh, I hope that room is exactly what you're saying in this, and it, it turns out to be just a room of three good athletes, different in, in a lot of ways, Definitely. yet productive on the field. It'll be good for this offense and great for Cam Ward. Yeah, absolutely. No, I mean, I, I think just having a t- the tight, if you have the tight end, I mean, just, even in just like the red zone, right? right? Red zone situations. That was an area where Miami struggled a lot on offense a year ago. Uh, you know, I think now with Cam Ward and sort of the mobility and his ability to kind of create time, uh, extend plays, 
plus the, you know, actual having like, you know, real tight ends who can make things happen too in the red zone. I think that that just gives Miami such a boost, uh, you know, when you're kind of within that 20 yard line and, you know, it's time you, you got to punch it into the end zone too many times last year. Uh, Miami failed to do that. And it definitely right. hurt, you know, it hurt, it hurt in some key moments um, where it feels like it changed the game at times. So I, I think, uh, you know, tight ends, especially in the red zone are going to be extremely uh, useful. Yeah. And I'm glad Shannon Dawson that day that I saw you out there at camp brought up the fact that, you know, the turnovers and the red zone kind of efficiency, the scoring in the red zone yeah. are two things that we need to to fix right away. God, you fix those two things, that's probably two or three more wins. Oh, yeah. You, right. You know, like I know that's another thing that we've talked about before. Like if they just fix one or two things, it's not like a whole overdoing this team and everything. But it's if they close. Just, it's right there. Right. Like it's something you brought up also, I think, a couple of weeks ago when we talked the fact that like this team, if they just fix, if they just clean up one or two things on offense, it's like a totally different season they could have had. Last oh yeah. Yeah. They're so close. I mean, imagine just, I mean, even the ridiculous Georgia tech game with the needle, right. like whatever, like right. just, let's say just that one situation, that's eight wins. Right. Uh, you know, and then there's other, there's other games, you know, like you got NC state at NC, you know, you you get stuffed on the goal line. Uh, if you punch it in there, I mean, you get punched on the goal line and then NC state goes and scores the next drive breaks the game open. I mean, if you score on that drive, you answer back. I mean, you got, you think about North Carolina, I think Henry Parrish fumbled right. crossing the end zone where you have a chance to go up. I think, I, I mean, I think you would have gone up 21 or so. I don't know. You would have gone up like 10 or something instead. Been double digits. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, it would have yeah. been a double digit lead at North Carolina when they had, they were coming off a loss too. I feel like that changes the whole trajectory of that game. I mean, there's just, there's a ton of, exam- I mean, we can just keep going. Like if this right. team was, and then the whole turnover issue, like the turnover, That's again, it. it's, it's margins, you know, it's, it's little things like that, that make, you know, it could have been an eight-win team that, again, had room to potentially be a nine. That made I wouldn't. Even, I don't even want to say ten. But that mine last year team nine could have been an eight-win team. That's a nine-win right. team. You know, easily just in those margins. So imagine. I think that they can take an even greater step here in twenty twenty-four with you know. Again, you clean those things up, and again, it's just there's so much. There's so much. There's so much potential there, and right. and that's obviously uh, you. You see those things. You see the shell of it, right? It obviously needs to come together. But I think there's pieces there that, you know, you you look at it, it's like, all right, they start fixing up these little things that they kind of got wrong uh, and it feels like they can. Then, like, you know, what's what's the ceiling of this team? How, how far right. can this team kind of take it? And uh, uh, again, yeah, it's it's exciting. No, it, it totally is. It really like there is there's a buzz. There's an excitement. And I know that we always have it every spring, no matter what. But it just right. feels a little bit different, I think, because of the Cam Ward situation. But because of the fact there's so many guys coming back, there's a lot of talent on this team. Uh, a lot we're not going to see in spring. And I know that. But that's fine. But there's so much talent on this team. How much can a, a guy like JoJo Trader learn for Restrepo standing behind him all year? I think about yeah. little things like that. Like the how much could a young guy learn? Like how much could a guy and it's funny I'm saying this because Ruben Bain is now going into year two, not year one, but how yeah. much could another young guy learn from Ruben Bain? How much can a JoJo Trader learn from Restrepo? How much could that quarterback room learn from sitting a season with Cam Ward. Oh yeah. Like there's so many things, there's so many kind of intangibles now with this team that maybe wasn't there a couple of years ago. And that's from having Mario have a couple of different recruiting cycles in the transfer portal. That's exactly what it is. Right. Yeah. And I, you know, when it comes to some of those older guys, like you talk about the, what, what Xavier Strepo kind of brings, you know, like I think it's just that leadership aspect, right? right. It's, it's someone that you can kind of point to and be, and you, you know, that he's the guy that's kind of like the leader of your room. So, you know, in the wide receiver room, it's Xavier Strepo and, you know, Jojo Trader, you know, it's, it's a work ethic thing. It's, it's what is he doing? How is he studying? Uh, what's he doing to get extra work? And I think even, especially in the quarterback room, like I think the quarterback room with Cam Ward and even, uh, you know, Reese Poffenbarger, Jakari Brown, Emery Williams, like, yeah, all those guys have started games, but you get a guy like Cam Ward who's taking right. it to the kind of like that next level. And those guys, you know, get to look at Cam Ward and be like, all right, how does he go about his business? How does Reese Poffenbarger, a veteran guy, go about his business. And I think it's creating a new culture in that quarterback room. I think, you know, even in the defensive room with Ruben Bain, like Ruben Bain is, you know, outside of just being kind of just a physical freak of nature and insanely (laughs) strong, he's a competitor who, you know, again, he he's, he's going to spring, he's going super, you know, he goes hard and, you know, if he's healthy, he's on the field. He's just one of those guys that he, he's a good person to emulate. And you got some young guys coming in behind him. Uh, you know, a guy like Marquise Lightfoot, uh, Armando Blunt. You know, I think those guys can look at Ruben Bain, watch the way he works, the way he kind of just puts his head down uh, and leads, you know, just by example, just by the way he works. I think Miami's starting to uh, get more guys on the roster that are are worth emulating, that are building proper, um, you know, habits for the room, for the young guys below them, where it's just kind of like a new standard. It's like, 
and you carry that with you because you watch this guy do it and then you emulate him and the next guy watches you do what you were just doing watching the guy before you do right. you know it's, it's a cycle you want to create a you want to create a, a culture a standard where you know there's always an expectation and i think miami's uh you know getting closer to just having that more naturally just player led as they always say you want the players to lead right, right? The oh, players of course. to be the example I think Miami's getting closer to being in a spot where those types of things are happening. Yeah, and I agree with you totally because I think it was missing for years. I was think it was, I think it was just missing that culture in the locker room, and, and it's no shot at Manny or even Randy or at like it's no shot at those guys. But when you don't have like you said a player led culture, it's different. And, and and we're so used to that down there. You can go back to the '80s Hurricanes and and keep going up from there, and you could just tell how guys wanted to emulate. The guy that played before them, whether they were there on campus or not, when well, the wide receivers looked up to Michael Irvin and then the wide receivers looked up to Lamar Thomas and, and they would come back. This is this is what needed to be, you know, it needed to come full circle. It's almost like they needed to hit a rock to like yeah. kind of find out what they have there. And I think they finally did that. And I think that that's good. It's a good we'll see because it all happens to be we'll play see. on the field. Definitely. Right. They of go course. five and seven again or whatever it is, you know, like that. You're obviously going to hit another wall at that point there. Um, okay. So what do you, um, what are you hearing latest buzz? Cause I know you were all over 24 hours a day recruiting wise yeah. or portal wise, any, any new news out there for, uh, or, or visits coming up that people need to know about. Yeah. I mean, I think it's, you know, it's going to be a big week. Uh, you know, just they use these spring practices as opportunities to obviously, you know, get as right. many guys around the program as they can. Uh, you know, there'll be, there'll be plenty of, of big visits this week. They're getting, they're getting, uh, you know, two of their top tight end targets, uh, Luca Gilbert out of Ohio and Brock Schott out of Indiana. I mean, both those guys will be around uh, the school this week. They're going to get a uh, Ty Jackson, who's you know a top linebacker out in Palm Beach County. I can't even remember the name of the school. It's a small school, right. but you know a lot of people think he's a really good player. You know, he's one of the many names that are on Miami's kind of linebacker radar. You know, this weekend they'll get a top offensive line target in Jalen Matthews out of New Jersey. Uh, he's coming down, uh, you know, alongside you know a bunch of other guys. I mean, it's it's always. Uh, it's ever changing. It's always new. We'll see who kind of pops in. But you know, if you're into the recruiting game, uh, you know that it's it, it's a lot of fun because Miami does, uh, you know, definitely attract some some of the nation's elite, and uh, that'll be no different here over you know this next week of spring practice that they kind of get going. So a, a lot to look forward to on the recruiting front. Uh, you good. know, for Miami this coming week. That's fantastic news. I'm sure Canes fans all over the place are very happy to hear that anyway, to see all these rock stars coming down here to hopefully yeah. come to the University of Miami. All right, tell the world, by the way, because I don't do a good enough job doing this for you, where can yeah. they follow all your stuff when it comes to Twitter, yeah. social media, all that stuff? Because I follow you. I'm like, I'm like the groupie, but I want to make sure that everyone <laughs> else becomes groupies also with Gabby. No, yeah, yeah, you can find my stuff on Twitter, at Gabby Urudia 247 You know, you can find all my work at InsideU.com. Again, we're part of the 24-7 Sports Network. Uh, you know, wall-to-wall Miami Hurricanes football coverage. I don't think anyone does it better than us. So uh, uh, I, I, if you want, you know, again, if you want to stay locked in to, you know, everything that's kind of going on with, you know, in the ins and outs of the program, the recruiting, uh, you know, my, uh, you know, Inside U is definitely the, the spot for you. So I would encourage you guys all to check that out. Yep. You got to make sure that you follow Gabby on all this stuff because he's got stuff literally almost every day with some sort of news or something. Through the Smoke podcast, you can catch him yeah, as well. Yeah, Through the Smoke, yeah. Right, you can catch him. He's everywhere. Gabby's everywhere, but he always makes time for me. That's all that matters. It's all, I'm, I'm the, I'm the, you know, I'm the guy that has to latch him on and bring him on here every once in a while. Happy, and happy, do happy to do it. Right, of course, of course. Well, I'll see you back out of camp. Uh, Pro Day, like you said, today we are taping here on a Monday. This is going to post either later today or tomorrow morning. So we'll get an update on that also. Make sure you're following Gabby for all the updates all week long for that stuff and for great, great, great day-by-day coverage of what's going on in spring football. Gabby, as always, thank you so much for your time today. We'll bug you again soon. Absolutely, Zach. Thank you for having me, man. All right, Gabby Rudia from 247 Sports. He's the recruiting guru, not just for them, but for Crancis Corner through the Smoke Podcast. Follow him on all socials always. And it's always good an update here from Gabby on Crancis Corner.